We are in the developer zone of Affinity Photo with a picture that I took quite some time ago. As you can see, that sky looks well and truly blown. In fact, if I just turn on the warnings, it's a little bit red. It's a raw file, so there might be some detail we can pull out of it. Now, as I said, I took it a long time ago, but it's an image that I keep looking at and thinking I must do something with it. Then I had an idea an HDR style picture. So that is what we're going to do. And we can start it by heading down to Shadow and Highlights. Now with Shadow and Highlights, we need to open up the shadows, taking it all the way to 100%. We're going to close down the highlights, so taking it in the opposite direction, all the way to minus 100%. And you can see there's now a little bit of detail starting to come through in the sky. Contrast missing. We're going to add some by some moving the contrast slider here. Let's take clarity all the way to 100%. Again, that's improving that uh, detail in the sky. Just looking at the contrast, I'll leave it there. Increasing the brightness just to bring through more detail around this area in particular. So just bringing that in. I want a little bit more depth in those blacks. So moving the black point in a touch like how this is starting to look. Now for the next stage, I want to go into the photo persona. I've got the hand tool selected. You can see output, you've got pixel layer. Don't use these. You've got raw layer embedded. You've got raw layer linked. Use either one of these. What's the difference? So if you move your images from folder to folder, from hard drive to hard drive, use embedded. All the information in the develop persona will go with the image. If you don't, if you keep it in one folder and just leave it there on that particular hard drive, use raw layer linked. This is a smaller file size as well. I tend to use this one. We're now going to go to develop, taking us into the photo persona. First thing we're going to do is head straight down for a live filter and we're going to go to clarity. We're going to add more clarity, taking it all the way to 100%. That looks pretty good. You can see it's been added as a child and you can see the blue line is around there indicating this is the live layer. So Command J, Control J will duplicate that. Let's lift it out onto its own layer. And I'm just going to come to the opacity. We're gonna drop it right the way down. And I'm just gonna slowly dial it in until I see the amount of detail coming through in the clouds and into this area here. That looks pretty good. Right, looking at the image, what I want to do is I want to keep the center of focus on our train. So I love using vignettes. When this opens, you can see the way it's gone to the top of the stack. I'm going to come to exposure. You can darken it down or you can brighten it up. Now for this particular one, I'm going to brighten it up, taking it all the way to the maximum of four. Hardness, I'm going to drop it down very slightly. Scale, taking this down. So I've just got the main area of focus here. So taking it a little bit more and the shape, I'm just going to give it a little bit of an oval shape, taking the scale out again, just to keep the detail here. And with this particular image, I've been lucky, get a little bit of a 3D effect as well. But opacity, dropping it right down slowly dialing it in. I want to keep this smoke coming out of the top here. So I'm just going to slowly dial it in. Perhaps something in that area there looks pretty good. If we zoom in, like the way this is coming together, but I don't like the noise that we've now got in our image. So this is where coming to the thumbnail using a raw layer comes to play because we can go back to the develop persona. We can head over to details. We can come to the luminance slider for the noise. We can increase this. I'm guessing it's going to be around about 30%. Just waiting for it to fall into place. Switch it off. And you can see there's all the noise back, the noise around here as well, switching it back on. That looks pretty good. Makes it a little bit soft on the edges. Now you could use the detail refinement, but I don't particularly like using this. Instead, we're going to go back to develop heading back over to the photo persona. I'm going to leave it at 100%. That is important because we're going to use a live filter, the unsharp mask. 
nickname for it. And the reason is it doesn't actually sharpen the image. Let's take it up above our clarity. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust the contrast between the pixels. And that's what happens. You can't sharpen an unsharp image. You can adjust the contrast between the pixels. And if I use the radius taking this, we're going to go one pixel. So if you think of our light here as being a pixel, yes, I know it's random pixels as square, but this is our pixel and we're going to adjust the contrast out by a factor or the amount. I'm going to take it up. I usually resize my images before doing this, but I'm going to leave this at full size. I'm going to take it right up, just waiting for it to drop in, taking it a touch more to two. That looks pretty good. Once again, switch it off. I'm looking at the numbers in particular around here and the detail there. I like that. It is a live filter. You can come back. You can change. You can adjust it. Let's just zoom out. Command zero, control zero. Finishing touch. If I just double click, we're back in the develop persona. The one thing you'll notice, all the effects that we've applied in the photo persona, you can see here in the develop persona, if I just switch this off, there it is without the live filters, without the adjustment layers that you may have applied. Switch it back on. There they are. So you can see exactly how the image is going to look. Let's give those colors a bit of a shot in the arm, taking the vibrance up to this area here. Once again, this is all going to be completely adjustable when you save it as a dot AF photo file. So everything will be saved. All the information will be saved as well. So you can come back, you can change any of these adjustment layers we put in, or should I say live filters that we put in, and you can come back into the develop persona as well. So there it is. There is our finished image. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come. And if you click that little bell icon, you'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.